Good afternoon, Tara. Hi, Julianne. How are you? I'm doing well. It's been a lot of snow here these last few days. <laughs> so I'm really bundled up and like tucked away in the corner of the house where there's like some natural sunlight just being warm. <laughs> How are you doing? Great. There's no snow here. Aww. <laughs> I know. I'm like, you can live where I used to almost live. So I love that. Are you in Mahone Bay now, or where is it that you're living? Uh, just outside of Mahone Bay in Bridgewater. Oh, great. Nova Scotia. Your home. Oh. Yeah, my hometown. Everyone's like, what? Nova Scotia, Lunenburg? I'm like, you know, the blue nose and the back of the dime. <laughs> I'm from where that boat was made. <laughs> where Oak Island is. There's a lot of people yes. Island show. That has really put Mahone Bay, Lunenburg, and Bridgewater on the map, that show. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I know you from, well, we're friends, but when I first found you, I was struggling with a lot of sinus issues and immune system issues and was looking for alternatives. So I went on Google, this was probably like what, four years ago now. And I was typing in allergies and alternative healings and I found you. And that's when you were living in Fredericton, New Brunswick. And I started coming to you for Nate treatments and then that developed into readings and channelings and if you could maybe just start to explain your journey from what you were doing before and even maybe as a nurse to how you were first called to alternative healings and where you where it has led you to now. Yeah, sure. Um, so I was a nurse for 12 years and I specialized in pediatrics and psychiatric um so that wasn't fulfilling me anymore so i was um i had an injury and i ha and uh, the medical system wasn't working to heal myself so i started looking into alternative medicine and ended up um taking courses on energy healing and i did nate allergy treatment for a while so i slowly transitioned from uh, nursing into the natural therapy and then when i was doing the natural therapy, all the stuff um, that I had kind of shut down from childhood with receiving messages from spirit started to open up again. And of course, at first I ignored it. And, um, and then all my clients stopped. So my guide said, if you're not going to give our messages, you're not going to get clients. So mm -hmm. I uh, said, okay, I'll give the messages. So I started to, you know, slowly give messages and I'm still doing, um, natural therapy or healing work um, within, you know, the, the community in New Brunswick in Fredericton. And so I did that for a few years and then it slowly transitioned into um, trans channeling, which took, um, when I did started doing the channeling of spirit, I um, wanted to work with um, the Ascended Masters because they, they had been coming to me and saying that, you know, we had sole contract to to work together. So um, I had asked them to to show me how they were going to be working with me, and uh, that began uh, my process of finding trans channeling. So um, I had to clear out my chakras um, with them for about eight eight or nine years before I started doing trance channeling. And that's because when I do go into trance and I'm channeling Ascended Master St. Germain, other Ascended Masters are coming in with um, different frequencies coming through my chakras to um, offer to the audience or to the person I'm channeling for uh, to integrate healing frequencies. Um, and it's always up to them how they receive. So if they wish to receive it um, for, you know, physical pain, emotional pain, spiritual pain, mental pain, whatever it is, it's up to them on a conscious and spiritual level what they're open to receiving. So I never know what they're going to receive, but I'm shown as I'm doing the channel reading, um, my guides will show me where that person is receiving. So uh, St. Germain is always the one that translates the message. And um, I also enjoy working with them because I'm, it's always uh, just 
divine, highest light. Um, I do connect with uh, people who have crossed over, but I'll get St. Germain to bring them in. And um, so really it's like, as soon as you book the appointment or come to a group session, your spirit guides start working with my spirit guides, but ultimately it's all one energy and it's all conscious love that we're channeling. So it's, it's uh, because we're, we're um, human and we like to have identities and attachments and yeah. friends. We, we kind of choose to play with spirit guides. So it's kind of like having friends on planet earth, but they're in spirit form. So, um, you know, you, you're, we're all this assigned uh, spirit guides in our lifetime, whatever you choose to do in your life, spirit guides will come and help you out with that, um, whether you're aware, aware or not. So um, everyone can channel and I teach a channeling course on um, how to channel and um, St. Germain teaches that course with me. So he'll know exactly where the person is vibrating at to with what they're ready to receive at that time for um, how to connect with their own guides. Uh, like, you know, where, wherever they're vibrating at. So if you're a beginner, he'll teach you from where you're at as you start okay. out. But if you're an advanced channeler, he'll teach you from there. So it, it depends on where um, your, your vibration is because we're all vibrational beings and you receive um, where, or your awareness is from where you're vibrating at. Um, so I do the channel uh, teachings for how to channel and also um, consciousness class, which is anything with ascension symptoms or awakening symptoms that you have questions for Ascended Master St. Germain, he'll, um, he'll assist you um, with that. So, yeah. Oh, I love it all so much. <laughs> the question i kind of went off like no it was actually all that i wanted so that was great it was like this whole journey and that is what i asked for so that was great yeah it just kind of um started to come in where um they wanted me to do the trans channeling where um he uses my voice box and my hand movements to speak through me so when that started, um, I would put it on YouTube for uh, people to watch his channeled messages. And now at this time, it's starting to accelerate because there's so many more people awakening and they're ready to hear his messages. And uh, Ascended Master St. Germain's working with many, many light workers um, at this time. It's not just me, it's like there's uh, like thousands of light workers that he's working with. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're feeling drawn to him or you come across him on the internet or somebody mentions his name, it's probably because he's, he's wanting to work with you. So call him in and um, he's got many messages and uh, gifts of the violet flame. It's, it's what he brings through um, for healing for people uh, is this frequency of the violet flame, which is a really high divine light frequency. Okay. And, it helps with the uh, ascension symptoms. It helps you to awaken to remembering who you are as a conscious being. So, um, yeah, I guess my message for, for you is to connect with him directly. Like, okay. so even if you want to go watch um, videos, like the YouTube videos of him channeling, but you're not comfortable to book a private appointment, you can call him in directly. Um, but uh, he's wanting to, to connect with everyone, so. And who is he as an Ascended Master? Like if someone were to look up his bio or his history, what is it that he was um, and what, how does he use his healing now with people? You mentioned the Violet Flame. Yes, he, he, was, uh, he had many lifetimes on planet Earth as um, a lot of historical figures that you'd recognize, like uh, Merlin or Francis Bacon. Um, cool. Yeah, there's there's uh, Joseph, uh, Jesus's father. There was, um, I don't know. He has a lot of different uh, lifetimes that he's had that led up to what he came to teach now. So he's an ascended master, meaning he. Um, has ascended to a higher frequency of divine love so like a higher dimension so they come to me from like a 12th dimension um 
vibration. So when he was on planet Earth, his last lifetime, he was named Saint Germain and he was named it after a town. It's a, a town, um, I think it's in France. Um, so he had been named Saint Germain, so he took on that name after he um, as Ascended Master Saint Germain. Now for two th the past 2000 years, we had Jesus as a spiritual leader, Buddha, like for the past 2000 years for um, humanity during the uh, Piscean age. And now we're moving into the Aquarian age. So when Saint Germain comes to me, he comes to me with, with Jesus as well. So it's, it's okay. Yeah, they're they kind of working together, but um, it's like Saint Germain is a spiritual leader for the Aquarian age, and that's why he's telling me to tell everyone to call him in. Like he's he's open to work with everyone, just like everyone's worked with or connected to Jesus in the past two thousand years. Okay. So, yeah, they come in together, and again, like you pick your spirit guides based on your belief system. So if you were um, raised in India as a Buddhist, then you'd be calling him Buddha, but it's the same energy. It's just what form would you like to connect with? But the divine love's going to come to you, um, whichever way you're comfortable with. Um, that's what you'll create in your reality. And when he says to me, I'm like, well, how do you, you know, who your spirit guides are? And he says, well, who do you want to create in your reality? Who do you want to play with? You, you chose your friend's on uh, planet earth you you can choose your friends and spirit world i love well. that yeah and it's our reality um and their their vibration is there and if you match that frequency of love that they are offering to bring in if you're open your heart's open to to connecting with them they will be there there he doesn't want you to question whether they're there or not he says if you're you're heart centered and you're able to connect with um the divine love, we will be connecting with you. There's no question. Um, it's it's your reality and their their energy frequency. They can. There's no time in uh, in spirit form like we had. We experience time as linear, where you know there's past, present, future. But there, there's no time. So he can be with everyone at the same time in our reality. But um, yeah, if you want to connect to anybody you're feeling drawn to, it's probably because you're matching, or it is because you're matching that frequency. So if, you know, Archangel Michael keeps showing up, then work with him. He's, that means he's there. Like, if you're reading about him, hearing about him, it means you're matching his frequency and he's open to working with you. So um, they say that we get in our heads and see, sometimes we'll see the Ascended Masters as more important, but they want to they're saying we are you who are us so they want you to feel um worthy of of receiving receiving their love and their messages and their healing and um yeah that's a beautiful way of putting it i never thought about it like in that way like well you are us so you are worthy yeah 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 difference and every time that we integrate something within ourselves like we're here experiencing the polarities on planet earth of the dark and light of everything on planet earth has an opposite or a contrast and as we experience that we we learn compassion so when you experience the deepest darkness then you'll know the polarity of that in light and that's when we learn compassion so if you if you lose a loved one and you're going through a deep grief as you integrate that frequency um, back to love of that grief, yeah. transmute it. You offer that compassion out to the whole universe. So he's saying you, we receive from you as well as, you know, we're teaching them, or it's an ex equal exchange of energy. So when we're when we're working with the guides, it's always an equal exchange of energies. Um, so they, it, it's not like you can ask for too much. He says you can't ask for too much. It's always an equal exchange. Um, he's telling me right now that there's some people that um, are kind of intimidated or don't feel like maybe my question's silly or maybe I, I shouldn't ask this. He, there's no silly question. Ask it. If, okay. if they, yeah, they, they understand. Where, they don't judge your questions. Um, you can't ask for too much and you can't ask a wrong question. They're never going to judge it. Um, and they never judge anything that we experience as humans like we're here to experience both the dark and light 
um, as an experience. Mm -hmm. um, we perceive it as struggle, but they don't. They, yes, they're like, everything's great. It's supposed to be that way. Yeah, they're perceiving it as, um, you know, this this uh, beautiful experience from a soul's perspective when you go to the deepest darkness and then you have great soul expansion. And so it's, it's going to those, you know, difficult times in our lives um, where we um, grow the most on a spiritual level or expand our consciousness the most. When you were a child, what was that like receiving messages? Like, did you, see people or hear things or feel things because I know for me my grandmother is gifted in that way as well so I grew up with like that was a normal conversation whereas some families are like you don't talk about that like I wouldn't go to school and talk to people that I'm like I think I know things that I'm not supposed to know <laughs> or I know things before they're happening like you know I wouldn't just like talk about that openly with people but like in my family it was kind of okay to talk about so what was that like for you as a child like was that received well and also like how did the spirit guide contact you in that way when you were younger um so for me it was very um taboo it was like i was raised very catholic and um my parents did not believe in connecting with spirit. They thought that it would okay. be the devil getting in. So I had to clear a lot with them, a lot of religious beliefs and stuff. So as a child, it was like, um, I would, I actually heard them different as a child. I heard them as, um, um, a louder voice of, um, uh, I would see like, like, a vision but also the the voice was a lot clearer more precise um like there was no trying to connect it was just very clear and it was always right before something would happen that maybe emotionally would be difficult for me because i was so sensitive so they would come to me and they'd say you know your gram this is the last time you'll see your grandmother before she passes but we want you to know that it's okay and um you know, everything's fine. And then it was like, they would give me a knowing of not to share that. Okay. Right. So it was like, I knew that it was like something that I was going to keep to myself. Yeah. But I didn't know why I just kind of, it was like, so they, they would always show up. Um, usually at my most difficult times in my life, um, or at the biggest events, like where something really exciting was about to happen. So I guess it was like when I was in a, when you connect with spirit, like when you're in a really high vibration, they come in really easily. Mm -hmm. um, but with me, it was, it didn't matter. It just like they came, I, I guess when I needed them the most. Um, no. I kind of thought that it was, I think I thought it was just normal. Yeah. I, did, I don't, I don't think it, I never really, I don't know. I just thought it was kind of, it was normal for me. So I just, yeah. just normal for everyone. Um, the sensitivity uh, of how sensitive I was to, to everything, everyone's emotions, like everyone watching this is, isn't it? like empathic or sensitive to energy so it, it they all understand everybody watching this understands what i'm talking about is like when you're a child and just being yeah. overwhelmed with everything and it's um you know shutting everything down with addictions i went into it, like a lot of addictions through my teenage years and right my most of my 20s um, so now they're, my addictions are, are gone except for food. I, I'm still a foodie, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So as I've, I've come back more in alignment with what I came to do, um, the addictions kind of just left because, um, they explained to me like addictions, like that feeling we're trying to get to the best feeling that we can get to. Yeah. And so, um, the, our ego tricks us and says, well, if you, you know, if you have this, that'll make you feel better. So if you 
if you, if you drink or if you eat or, or whatever it is, um, whatever your go-to thing. Um, so our, our intention is to get to the best feeling place, which is always our spirits always trying to get closer to the Christ energy or, or God consciousness or universal energy, source energy, whatever you want to call it. So, um, there's a lot of people he's telling me right now, there's a lot of people watching this that have had addiction struggle and he doesn't want mm -hmm. you to judge yourself anymore for it. Mm -hmm. Your intention was to try to get to a better feeling place and people with addictions have a lot of creative energy. He's showing me their energy field as um, very large. And so when you have all this energy and it's like, what do I do with it? Well, he's saying, you know, to, to, the addictions calmed you down and grounded you. If I eat yeah. this, I'll feel grounded. Um, he's, he's saying there's a lot of people just kind of um, stepping out. And it's, it's right now, it's to integrate yourself fully into your human body as a, a spiritual being, integrating into a, a human body and feeling safe. And um, when you didn't feel safe, you, you kind of stepped out and you've got all this energy and it's like, how can I, I feel safer? And so the addictions came in. When you create, and he's saying create with anything, um, sports, uh, art, music, writing, uh, flowers, uh, gardening, whatever, mother, being a mother, whatever creative energy that you have that you're drawn to, if you start creating 15 or 20 minutes a day, your addictions will go like, um, because then you're using that energy that you've always been trying to calm down. You're using it to create from uh, God source energy. Um, so as you start to create, you connect with the consciousness within you. And so it's like your inner child or your spiritual body is, is the one that's creating because you're a co-creator, your, your essence is consciousness. As you create, he's saying that the universe, the universal energy or um, that consciousness is going to join you and, and bring through the love into the creation. So if you look at any musician or artist, uh, you know, when they're in their, their zone, it's their consciousness is, is connecting with the consciousness of all and channeling that divine love into whatever they're doing. That's why it feels so good. That's why they continue to do it, even if it doesn't pay a lot, you know, it's not about the money, it's about um, creating. So he's saying a lot of people that are watching this have addiction struggles and he doesn't want you to view it that way. <clears throat> he wants you to, to see the greatness within yourself and start, what can I create with? What can I use this energy to create? And he said, and the addictions will just kind of slowly go away. He's saying to ask them for help. They'll help with, um, um, you know, removing that, that, uh, you know, trying to feel grounded through the uh, addictions, the cravings. He's saying the yeah. cravings will help with that. Beautiful. That's such a more loving way to look at addiction is they're just trying to get to a better feeling place. Cause a lot of people look at it as like, or something wrong with me or that person or they must not care or you know, like so much judgment where that's just such a good, gracious gentle loving way of look of really encompassing that term is you're just trying to get to a better feeling place which is true yeah yeah the intention is always good and, it, and he says it's it's only you judging you Mm -hmm. And when other people judge you for it. It's a reflection of how you're judging yourself for it. Like we beat ourselves up so much. And so it shows up in a reality to show us we're judging ourselves. Spirit never judges. He's like, we don't, we don't judge any of your addictions. Call us in and we'll, we'll help, uh, we'll help you with it. And he's saying that there's a lot of people that don't feel worthy of receiving, um, help from their spirit guides because of their addictions because they're, they're thinking they're getting judged and he said it's the opposite he says okay. Colin, can i help you with it and they don't have any um if you have addictions it just means you're a great creator <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> really, basically you know, like, that's kind of what i was getting out of what you were saying as well because if you put that energy somewhere else imagine what that would look like yeah, exactly, Julianne. That's the it, you said it perfectly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I'm thinking of like examples of just like 
people with similar stories and it's like well I had this addiction and then I turned it into this and everyone's like oh such a big transformation story and it's like well they just really redirected their energy and used it more from a space of creativity because sometimes you need to get to like that low place so you just don't like give a shit anymore and then you start being more yourself because you're like well I already did like I already felt shitty so I might as well just try something else and then it's really you're just becoming more yourself. That's awesome. <laughs> Good way of looking at it. Um, for like for me, I have like kind of I guess my own definition of awakening and how that feels and what that looks like in my own life. Or if I were to explain it to someone else, how would you define awakening? Or if there's people watching and listening to this that are like I think I have some symptoms or I have some things going on is that awakening or is that just something else like maybe they're questioning so how would there be kind of like a clear helpful way to define what awakening is okay so when you realize that everything outside of yourself is no longer making you happy so that's how it usually starts so, it was like shit. <laughs> yeah, it's like um, so for, as as uh, as humans, we're in a third dimension reality, which is a reality that's run by the ego consciousness. So the ego consciousness is um, it, its job is to keep us living in fear. And so when you're awakening, your spirit says. I'm tired of living in fear and being worked up about things all the time and always seeking to find happiness outside of myself. So the ego says, buy this, that'll make you happy and you buy it. And then a week later you need something to buy something else because it's like an illusion of joy that you, it can never be satisfied. It can never be fulfilled. Yes. So the ego always keeps us chasing. And now, um, the, the actual planet's vibrational frequency has raised to, to more love. And so we can connect with more love. And when we connect with more love, our spirit is love. And our spirit mm -hmm. says, okay, I'm tired of the fear-based ego game in the third dimension. I would like to run the show instead of having my ego keeping me live in fear. I'm tired of pleasing people. I'm tired of chasing things and never being happy. I'm tired. So it's like, it's when you awaken, it's that your spirit's getting louder than your ego. Okay. And the ego isn't something to be judged or because the ego comes from God consciousness as well. So it, it's universal energy and it's here to play the game of the polarity of your love. So when, um, when you have the ego running the show, if there's always struggle or your perception is that there's struggle, there's suffering. But when your heart or your spirit runs the show, you see everything as perfect, as love, as it, so it's, you're moving from a perception of um, ego perception to a heart centered perception. That's the awakening. You're moving from a third dimension reality, perceiving everything in fear and struggle mm -hmm. and suffering to a fifth dimension reality where your perception is that your everything is love and imperfection and so that you don't get triggered by um it's like how can i see this in the eyes of love instead of the eyes of fear so when for example you you brought up the weather today so you know, when our mothers call and say, oh my God, the roads are treacherous, you know, the, the snowstorm's coming, you, you need to, to be in fear. Um, Saint Germain says, why would you be scared of a snowflake that melts on the tip of your finger? You know, it doesn't really make sense. How, what, what if you saw it in, as something beautiful and perfect? Would it be scary? You know, yeah. what, what is the fear of the snowstorm? when it's simply a snowflake that melts when you touch it. Like it, it's not anything more than that, except for if your perception makes it bigger. Mm -hmm. So it's like, as you begin to awaken, your perception changes so that you're not in this fear-based um, energy. 
as you begin to awaken, your ego says, I don't want you to awaken. I want you to keep you living in fear. So it seems like your ego gets louder, but it's not that it's getting louder. It's because you're becoming more aware. You're mm -hmm. becoming more aware of who you are as a conscious being. And then once you realize that your essence is consciousness and that you're connected to uh, everything, then you're empowered to change. So once you realize that you are the creator of your reality, then you have the power to change your reality. But yeah. when your ego perception of fear it's thinking that everything's outside of you and that things are happening to you when you awaken things happen for you and yeah. so it's changing that perception and it, and then it's it's saying oh i take full responsibility that i created this and that's not blaming yourself you know but it's perceiving it in a different way it's like oh i created this um to happen so that i could expand in a different way or expand my consciousness mm -hmm. and not seeing it as struggle or something bad like so if i have an illness i don't perceive it as something bad i perceive it as an emotion that's coming up to be loved and as i love it it goes away i don't need to go to the doctor i can just love it and it goes away so awesome it kind of like referred back to like or it could also be applied to the addiction sense where it's like you realize something outside of you isn't pleasing you or isn't giving you that joy that you're looking for. So you have to use your creativity or go within and make that your new reality because that's actually going to fulfill you, not what's outside of you. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's perfect um your classes do they have to be in person or do you do online ones and how can people book sessions with you um i have online classes and i keep them one-on-one -on -one so that you can get um, it directly for you for what you need to hear and so i do an hour uh how to channel class it's 85 dollars, and we do it by skype facetime um uh yeah skype or facetime and i also do telephone readings um by skype telephone or facetime and um if i do telephone it's in canada and then all the other ones you can do anywhere in the world but there's two classes that i teach online and if you go on my website um it's www.tarraarnoldart.com and if you go right. on you're yeah, just gonna I, add I, <laughs> maybe <laughs> put it at the end of the video or something or, underneath it um so if you go on my website you'll see uh courses and there's two ones that i teach online consciousness course and that's for the awakening or ascension and um then there's uh my youtube channels are on there and also for my readings i have a medical intuitive reading so if you have any medical stuff i can uh i work with ascended master saint germain he shows me um the you know any medical issues and then they bring through healing frequencies to um heal those like to go to the root cause of the root emotion of the the cause of the illness so um and that can come through skype or facetime it doesn't internet doesn't matter or in person mm. and then i do like one if you want to connect with spirit guide that crossed over or if you want to just talk to the ascended masters um, and talk to St. Germain and uh, trance channeling. I do a trance channeled reading as well. So those are all on my website. Uh, my readings are uh, $100 for a one hour, uh, hour reading. And um, I also do local workshops here in uh, Mahone Bay and Bridgewater um, and small group workshops. Um, they're really mm -hmm. fun. And so those are listed on my website as well. And what is your YouTube channel, the Tara Arnold's? Yeah, it's Tara Arnold, T-A-R-A, -A, um, and it's Channeling St. Germain. So if you type in Channeling St. Germain or my name, you'll find it on YouTube. Great, I'll add that in with the notes as well. Any final messages that you want to share, words of wisdom or information to anyone, anything else you want to share before we go? Um, I just want to say I appreciate uh, Julianne. I appreciate you uh, interviewing me, and you're a beautiful 
spirit and soul and I um, you. yeah I feel quite honored to uh, be part of your podcast today and I also want to say that um, everyone that's watching this is amazing magnificent great and Saint Germain saying it's time to step into your greatness it's time to show who you are it's time to um, you know be who you came to be and and that's uh, finding yourself um, as consciousness and showing the world your your gifts and your talents and you're all amazing it doesn't matter how much you've judged yourself mm -hmm. um, we're all equal and so he, he's just he's sending everyone out there a lot of love also he's telling me that through this video today he brought through frequencies um, for the third eye so uh, after watching this you might have more clarity more awareness um, I'll, I'll just ask him if there's any other ones just one second Um, like the crown chakra, third eye, and the throat chakra. So <clears throat> you might, some of you that are watching might feel a little raspy in the throat. It's because they brought through healing energies for throat chakra, um, third eye, and crown. Um, the crown chakra is your connection to the divine and also the brain, spinal cord, the ego. And then the third eye is your... Um, your intuitive ability so you more clarity more awareness and it's also like sinuses eyes um anything to do with eyes ears sinuses um if the third eye is blocked that's where the kind of symptoms you'll get so you might feel some mm -hmm. clearing and uh then the throat chakra it's um having a voice or speaking your truth so it's mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So those I've been are the clearing my throat a lot during this. So I was like, definitely throat chakra. <laughs> yeah, and he was, and that's. I was just explaining because uh, we were saying that through the internet you can receive healing frequencies, and so oh, yeah, um, yeah. So today that's where he was bringing them through. So yeah, yeah, that's how it works. So awesome! Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me and i'll we'll talk to you again soon i hope you enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy nova scotia thanks julian okay bye tara thanks, blessings blessings to you and mike and your kitty <laughs> <laughs> bye bye